One of the biggest mistakes you can make in retirement is defining it as a complicated problem. You're probably like, what? What are you talking about? Of course it's complicated. I won't have a paycheck. How does this all work? Let me explain what I mean. in a group with people in their 50s and 60s, and I asked them if they thought retirement planning was a complicated problem, and pretty much everybody raised their hand and said, of course it's complicated. There's so much to consider when it comes to taxes and creating a paycheck and withdrawal strategies, et cetera. And I said, we have to be very careful in how we define the problems that we're solving, including retirement planning, because if we define it incorrectly, it could cause us to waste a lot of time and a lot of money on our journey towards rocking retirement. Retirement planning actually isn't complicated, it's complex, and the distinction makes all the difference. Let's take a look about what I mean. So here we have a complicated problem. What's the key attribute of a complicated problem? The key attribute is that it's actually solvable. A complicated problem is solvable. Let's look at an example to sort of bring this home. Let's assume that we're in are at point A, and we want to get to point B, and we need to build a railroad between point A and point B. Now, that's a complicated problem, isn't it? We have a lot of different things to deal with. We have, we have the terrain. We have grade, whether we have mountains or not. We have roads that we'll have to cross, and we have property that we're going to have to get rights to. We have fuel. We have the materials. And all the logistics, this can be very complicated to build a railroad from point A to point B. But the key thing here is we can identify all the issues, organize how to deal with them, and solve for it. We know that because we have an amazing rail system here and in Europe where you can very easily go from point A to point B. The other distinction is that once it's solved for all this logistical stuff, this complicated problem, if we want to go to point C, we've already defined the project and we can very easily go to point C from point A or point B to point C. Once we've solved this complicated problem, now we can repeat that process over and over. And that's the key attribute of a complicated process. Now, let's contrast that with what a complex problem is. The key with a complex problem is it cannot be solved. It can only be managed. Once you manage it once, you can't repeat the process over and over. So let's, again, look at another example. I'm going to build an ocean here, and then we're going to have a little airplane up here that wants to land on this aircraft carrier. And I've used this definition before and I've talked to aviators and they, they concur with what I'm talking about here. Now, this is a very complex problem of how do we get that airplane down to that aircraft carrier? Because a complex problem has a lot of variables that interact in unpredictable ways. So we can imagine in this scenario, we're going to have wind that are going to impact both of these independently. We're going to have the current. We're going to have waves and the chop that makes the boat go up and down. We're going to have gusts. We could have storms come in. All of these things are happening dynamically and interacting on the airplane and the boat independently and in unpredictable fashions so that you can't just write an algorithm, build the project map, and solve it over and over. What has to happen is that the, the plane has to be managed and react to all of these unpredictable forces to slowly get safe on the plane. And when you have a complex problem, there's some key things that you need to have built into your complex uh, problem, and that is buffer. You need to have more fuel then you actually need to get to the boat because what happens if you have to abort your mission or happen, what happens if it takes longer to get to the boat? You have to have more buffer in the system in order to manage all of this uncertainty. Okay, 
This is all fine and good, but how does this relate to retirement? Well, retirement, get back there, is a complex problem. Even more complex, you could argue, than landing a airplane on an aircraft carrier. Let's go ahead and get that aircraft carrier down here. And we have our airplane, which is you and I trying to create a great retirement and manage it. We have a lot of external variables, right? That are gonna influence our retirement. We're gonna have interest rates. We're gonna have markets, actually multiple markets, bonds and stocks and international stocks. We're gonna have inflation. We're gonna have taxes and tax policy on and on and on, all of these things are external from us that we can't control and they're all gonna interact in unpredictable ways and we're not gonna be able to predict what interest rates are gonna be or what inflation's gonna be or what the markets are gonna do, returns and volatility, et cetera, which is gonna cause us to move all over the place on our trajectory towards our retirement. But in addition to that, we have internal variables that are gonna interact in unpredictable ways. We're gonna have our life circumstance. We're gonna be married, we're gonna be divorced, we're gonna be widowed, we're gonna have grandchildren, things that can happen out of the blue that we really can't predict or control. In addition, we're gonna have health circumstances. We're going to have a disease pop up that limits our mobility, which changes what retirement looks like, maybe gets us a lot closer to that end date than we thought. We're gonna have different Health issues come up in family events that we're going to have to manage. In addition, we're going to have cognitive issues, not just later in life and cognitive decline, but we have a lot of cognitive biases that are going to influence all the decision making that we make in terms of the quality of the decisions that we make. We are very human. That is our nature. Not only that, but one of the bigger ones that we don't put, give enough credit to is we have changing preferences. I'm a horrible speller, by the way. We have changing preferences, meaning that with the airplane to the aircraft carrier, that is a singular target that they're trying to manage. Although it's complex, it's a singular target. You and I, though, Whatever we say we want today, wherever that aircraft carrier of our life is, that target for us is today, it's going to evolve and change over time. So we may change our mind. We may be headed here and decide we want to go there, or we want to go there, or we want to go here because of changing preferences. Here's a perfect example. I just had a conversation with a client the other day who four or five years ago purchased a lake house with the intent of retiring there and living there forever. Well, we had a meeting the other day and they decided, you know what? Yeah, that was important to us, but it's not important to us now. And so they're changing the target of what they want their retirement to be. And this was totally unpredicted in addition to all of these other things. Now, why is this so important? Because if you approach retirement as a complicated problem, you're going to look for solutions. You're going to look for the 4% rule or the product or the one or two things that will solve this with the idea that you could live without uncertainty or anxiety or the need to do work. And those are all false promises that you can't actually achieve because it's not a complicated problem. It's a complex problem. So if retirement is a very complex problem, what do you need to focus on? You need to focus on having a sound process for decision making because you're gonna have a lot of little baby decisions to make along the way, and you need to focus on making better decisions. How do I improve the quality of my decision-making so I can compound those better decisions over time? At first, this seems intimidating, but actually it's very freeing, because if you treat it as a complicated problem, your solution is always gonna come up short, which is going to cause you anxiety and cause you to decrease the, your confidence in finding the solution. Whereas if you treat it as a complex problem and accept that it has to be managed, not solved, now you can surf a little bit. You can manage the process and have confidence in the process that you're using, but also the quality of your decision-making and not waste a lot of time looking 
and chasing for false rainbows. I have confidence that you can manage your complex problem and we're gonna help you on this channel. So hang out with us and click subscribe and we'll go deeper on this in the future.